live. Now it's live. <laughs> oh, the debacle. Gotta love the live streams. Hey, everybody. Sorry for the delay. I was over here thinking that I was live. And there was like one more button that I had yet to press. And can you guess what it was? It was the go live button. But there's so many buttons in this world. Now we're live. I live. I live. Thanks for, as always, with patience, enduring the bloopers. What? Oh my gosh, is it worth it today? Wade Olson. Yeah, I was starting to feel kind of lonely. I was like, oh, there's nobody on the stream. It's because I was doing all these things, looking at all the bells and whistles, and the final bell was not whistling. But here we are. Welcome, welcome. All right, all right. I feel so much better. And now we have this groove going. Grab your guitar. It's cold outside in most of the US of A. For the American football enthusiasts, buckle up, it's gonna be a wild card kind of day. I've got this MIDI guitar, there's so much to get into, but let's just all warm up with this vamp and let's figure out what key it's in first. I know what key it's in, but let me show you the recipe that I would go for. If somebody was playing a groove like this, I'd be like, especially if I'm in the privacy of my own home and I can make a lot of mistakes, I will absolutely play a bunch of wrong notes. And I'm trying to find that root, that home note, which sounds like it could cut through the whole groove. There it is. Look at those green dots go. Whoa. And they will glitch out. It'll get crazy. So it sounds like we're in E. The open E strings really sound like that's home, okay? Let's try to find this groove. So it's already there. Try to just follow along with that. notes are the only notes you need for this particular riff and I got my iPad here I got back from vacation and I was like let's bring gadgets upon gadgets to the stream Show me an emoji of a guitar if you got your guitar with you. It's okay if you don't. We're gonna get into a lot of things. We're gonna test your brain today. We're gonna test your reflexes. But if you wanna groove on this little bass line, we're in E, we've got this sort of funky thing going on. Truth be told, I played the bass part and the keyboard part with my guitar today, with this new MIDI guitar. Oh, 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 oh. So now we're going to get into some things we could play up on top of this. So I'll scribble in up here. Ba ba doom, ba ba doom, ba ba doom. Try that if you want to start playing the rhythm up there. Got those guitars in the chat. Love to see it. So this right here is an E E9. So we're just playing a piece of that E9 chord. Oh, do you like the lava lamp back there too? That's right. That's also new. It's Christmas every day here now. I won that lava lamp. Fair and square in a white elephant gift exchange, and I fought for it. No stealing that. Can't steal the vibe from me. All right, so try that E9. And then try some different, more rhythmic styles right here. So that muting is with my left hand. I squeeze, and then I let go, but I don't lift off entirely. I'm just releasing as if you're releasing like the pedal on a piano, just to... in the back. James Box is here in the stream today. James Box knows me from back in the Twitch days and I'm sure James is happy to know that Tony and Lolly are still alive. 
they're still as you know, lively as they've ever been. No, they have their moments. Okay, so that's one rhythm idea up there on top. Let's move to another one. Oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I'm dropping my Apple Pencil. This one's a little bit crunchier. I'll show it to you. You'll see it as it goes around there, but this would be like an E minor nine. So even though that bass line groove is kind of playing the major third, oh, the major third, we'll get into that. We'll talk about that today. Like, what's he talking about? Theory, have no theory. Right there. So that's a cool shape. E minor nine. You might just know it by the shape. The question is, how are you gonna find it the next time you would like to use it? Ah, we'll get into that, guitar friend. We shall get into that. sound. It's crunchy as we say. So as this vamp is going around you can grab any one of those chords that you like. Here's another option. This one, uh, actually this one's kind of a classic choice. Wait, do I have the right spot there? Yeah. Okay, so this is like the E7 with the suspension. So that triangle there, you might know that it looks like that same D7 shape, but now we're doing it as an E7. But how do I find it? If you don't know how to find it, we'll talk about that today. All you can do though, first, is just trust your ear and know that it sounds good and you like it. Guitar friend Joe is hanging out. Oh, I'm so happy to see that. Guitar friend Joe, new friend of the channel. And a real shredder. The guy can wail. Sent me a video earlier this week. It was fun to watch that. And we're going to be talking about chord tones today, Joe, so I hope you stick around. And right now, we're just kind of loosening up over this E vamp. And these are little flavors and choices. I just think it's fun sometimes to, to learn new shapes and just test them with your ear first and be like, yeah, I like that. I'll use that. That one's going into the toolkit. Let's see, can I draw this one while looking at it from here? This one's kind of fun. This is like the fancy. And I'm drawing in that suspension there again, right? So that's another E9. This is sort of like, I would hear Stevie Ray do this a lot. And the sort of a... I love those suspensions. It's just a, an E9. Up and down, there we go, right? Up and down, all around. Back to that riff. Okay, guitar friends, let's get into it. Ba ba da boing, ba ba da bang, ba ba da boom. How we doing? How we feeling? I got a little reverb on my voice. That's great. I could not be more excited about this. This is, I'm not sponsored. This is Jamstick. This is the, the good folks at Jamstick have received my hard earned money. And I'm excited so far to try this because I had, I, I still watch so many guitar videos and I watch it sometimes from a place of research. By the way, my name's Tim, guitar friend Tim, if you're here for the first time, congratulations. Glad you made it. Um, uh, it, subscribers can talk in the chat, so go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already, and you can join us in the in the chat. We got Galen. Galen has been having some good uh, new gear days recently. New guitars. Uh, he had that. He's got a ukulele bass. He's got. Uh, what else did you get recently, Galen? It's been a string of really cool new gear days, and I maybe got a little bit envious. I'm like, I'm gonna get me something. So I put it, put aside a little bit of extra Christmas money and. So far, so great with this. It's a good sounding little guitar. I mean, they I think they just in the last year or so started making these like jam stick are the ones that look like they, they have a, no head normally and they're a little bit smaller. They look like they're from the future, like Bill and Ted Wild Stallions might have played them. But now they've started making them like this and it caught my eye and it's got good solid stratty tone, you know. So we're messing with it, we're getting the dots. 
I've got my iPad here. You probably saw it in the other angle. Um, and it's just kind of cool if I do say so. And I hope that it works well as we do some theory games today. So the idea here is that we're going to work out and play some things. We're also going to work out our brain. And I just want to talk with y'all and figure out what it is. Uh, if you can in the chat, what's the first thing that comes to mind when, when the phrase music theory is expressed and you can be honest. There's, I'm, you know, obviously I want you to feel like you're learning and you're excited, but when that phrase comes up, um, if there's any sort of resistance or if there's maybe excitement perhaps, or maybe there's a particular topic or maybe there's a particular like device, like, oh, I always see the circle of fifths in my head or fourths or whatever, or I think of caged, um, whatever it might be. Cause those associations, it's almost like we have to, uh, undo a little bit of trauma perhaps because I have this theory that a lot of it the resistance to music theory is just the, the word itself like theory sounds inherently kind of dry and like oh great yeah sign me up yeah now I was over here playing Led Zeppelin and now you want me to go over here and read the owner's manual and learn theory oh wow I can't wait um but I would say as we as we get into talking about this today um the overall thing spoiler alert is like just chip away at it and just be driven by something that you want to learn first, like, and by want, you desire it because your ears and your heart and your head are like, I like how that sounds, how do I do that? Or you reach the edge of, it's sort of like level one complete. And then that sort of preview of where you wanna go next usually has a little bit of a like, well, how do I do this? And for a lot of us, that might be open chords leads us to bar chords and then bar chords leads us to major or minor pentatonic scale and then that's sort of like okay what next and then there's just like wait now i gotta learn all these other dots and information it's like uh yes and no i would say some of it is yes if you want to go to another level of freedom and sort of self-expression there might be some things that just like anything else you pick up some some tricks and some skills and some methods but keep coming back to like, well, where's the proof? Where's the proof in the pudding? So by all means, know that I'm telling you like, yeah, you should hear it and test it and try it. Uh, let me see in the chat what you guys are saying. Hey, Adam, how are you? Good to see you here. We got Wade, we got Matt. And uh, I, I recognize, I'm gonna butcher your name. Is it Vo Wouter or is it Wouter? I'm, I can't tell if that is like the W that sounds like a V, but I recognize your name. And I said hi to, hi to you earlier this week. Uh, some of you may have received video message, uh, one or two from me, because I've got this new thing that allows me to send just a quick hello. So you might get uh, in your inbox. If you sign up for my five day free course, the link is in the description. I'll be talking about the, that today. But if you're like halfway through that course, you'll get like a hello video from me, like standing right here and I'll, I'll film it. And I know it seems kind of weird, but it's not AI or deep fake yet, at least. I'm in there just goofing around and sending you a what's up. Um, so you'll obviously, you'll get the five day free course and then you'll get sort of a, a surprise video from me at some point. Circle of fists. Yep. Yeah. yeah. This is kind of a fun looking guitar too. I like the, the baby blue. I was thinking like, you know, may, maybe if I really start using this in a lot of videos, I might spice it up and start like decorating it and stuff like that. Keep it interesting. Um, Wade is ready to learn it. I know a small amount sometimes helps. Yeah. That's great. I mean, just that approach of having a little bit, having enough to be dangerous, as they say. So you can sort of add to it as you go and then like keep going back to the trial and error, the sort of spaghetti test, as I say sometimes, like throw all the spaghetti on the wall, all of it, and see what sticks. Uh, thing I know, I need to know, but never know well enough. Yeah. And that's fair. Yeah. It's almost like the drawing up plays on the drawing board. So if you were to like, really like, we used to call it chalk talk. I played water polo, tangent, I know, side story, but like that was my main sport growing up. And so we're mostly in the pool playing water polo. Um, but sometimes we would like actually have to like get out of the pool and go to a classroom and have chalk talk. And our coach was really great at having these sort of, he'd have these like uh, articles he put together. This is back in the day before a lot of the sports psychology and, um, the sort of visualizations and those exercises that you hear about um, peak performing athletes, how they do that before bed and things like that, visualizing how they want their event to go. We were getting into that and we were getting into drawing up plays and strategies. And that was so vital because then when we went back into playing in the water, 
there was all this kind of new stuff we wanted to try out and just sort of a new way of framing it. But if we had spent all of our time just in the classroom, we'd never get into the actual thing itself. And if we had just been constantly playing and training, there'd be a lot that we'd get out of that, but we would probably start to feel like we weren't reaching our full potential as a team. So maybe part of what we're talking about here with, with theory is like, you sort of go to the drawing board, get some ideas, and then get excited to try it out and then see for yourself where it's working, where you want to do more or less of it. Analogies like that, buckle up for that today. But we're going to get into some games as well too. In fact, um, Wild Stallions, that's right. Yeah, Bill and Ted, bro. I did not watch, it just made me think, I did not watch the final Bill and Ted movie. I tried to maybe give it a chance around 2020 when it came out. Bill and Ted face the music, and then I was like, ah, I can't. It's just too bad. I can't spoil the memory. Um, music theory to me sounds like learning the underlying language of music. Ah, yes. I like it. Yes. Getting into the matrix, into the code. Yeah. It can seem dry on the surface. Until applied. Yeah. I've been joking that I think theory needs to be renamed Yuzi because it isn't theory if you use it. Pronounce as voter. I knew it. That's how I said it the first time, right? Vota. Yeah. Like I have a friend named uh, Wojtek and his name is spelled like W-O-T-E-K. And I was like, yeah, okay. Vota. Pleasure to have you here. The way it's taught as a standard sometimes hold ba holds back the aspect of enjoyment. Well, let's get into some of the enjoyment. I hear you, James. I'm a passionate teacher. Yeah, exactly. Cage bot sticker would be a great idea. DJ. I love it. Merch. Seriously. I have looked into Printify, all those things. We might be getting into it. Uh, I feel like theory is the way to go, so you can eventually... Yes, exactly. I hear you, Michael. That's great. I'm glad you're here. Tim Taylor, good morning. Tim Taylor of the North Pole, friends with Santa. Good person to know. Bogus journey was bad enough. Yeah, it was a definite step down from the original Excellent Adventure. I remember seeing Bogus Journey in the theater and I don't know, however many years ago that was, thinking like, that was pretty good. You know, I may have been the king size box of milk duds I had that sort of helped soften the landing. But what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? All right, let's get into sort of like a, a, a little initial game here. Oh, look at that, he got the iPad going. It's crazy. Okay, so um, I'm just sort of winging this, but let's sort of do a little bit of a game and then we'll sort of unpack some of the theory that's going on with it. So just as a sort of heads up, if I get into any of this and if any of the theory stuff that we're doing makes you feel like, oh man, I don't know this, don't panic, it's okay. If you don't know something, you don't know it yet. That's all it means. And if something is new, it might be a little confusing. It might be a little bit frustrating at first, but that's okay. You have a choice. You could either continue to work with it until it makes sense and clicks. And that's, that's kind of satisfying, but you don't have to do that because it's guitar and it's music. And if it feels good and you're doing something that you like, that's great. Um, so that's just the sort of, as always, this is not mandatory, but if you're looking for more, let's do it. Um, so let's imagine that these white dots, all of them, These are four options. They're all exactly the same note. They're all the root. So that, that's the root note, okay? Just go with me on this. You'll, you'll see where we're headed on this. So that white dot is the root. And compared to that white dot as the root, we've got this pink dot. Okay. So those are four options right there. This is multiple choice right here. What if I say, okay, this pink dot, I'm looking for, uh, let's see, I am looking for the major third. So compared to that white dot as the root, tell me in the chat, would it be one, two, three, or four? So answer one, two, three, or four in the chat, just multiple choice. And we've got our white note as the root. And that's the thing is that it doesn't even matter necessarily what that root note is. We're just working now with relative. So we're just doing the relative. And we're all going to have to get used to my handwriting. And I'll get better at it with this doodly doodly way. And at some point, I'll figure out how can I draw some really cool shades on me. And have a really cool mustache right there. Sort of a Sam Elliott thing. All right. What do we got in there? We got one, one, one. All right, good. So 
So we got our brains on. We're listening. We're watching. We're feeling it. Okay. Let's try another one. Here's the root. Uh, actually, we'll do the root right here. Okay. And now, same thing. One, two, three, four. Um, tell me where is the minor third? Which one is the minor third? Compared to that white note. Keep the vibey vibes going on behind me. Okay, we got some answers coming in. You guys are looking like you got this. A lot of number threes coming in. That's good. That's correct. All right, let's let's uh, let's try some other ones. Let's see. Okay. Um, we'll draw a chord here. Uh, we'll draw another chord here. We'll draw another chord here. We'll draw another chord here. Tell me, this one is two answers. Uh, which ones are the minor chords? So that's four different bar chords. In fact, that's kind of the four different bar chord, basic bar chord shapes. So two of those are minor chords. Which ones are they? So this one you have to answer with two different numbers. Is this fun? I don't know. I'm trying this and we could evolve these games and make them kind of a thing. I'd love to find a, a quick, easy way to, to test y'all. Uh, and we'll get into some ear training. We could even do some of that today. I'm sipping my uh, kombucha. Okay, okay. We got some good answers coming in. One and three, one and three, one and four, one and four. Good. This is our first one. We got some discrepancy. I like it. The correct answer. This will be so cool. I mean, we're doing it. So right here, this is a minor chord. That would be, let's say we're doing this on A minor. Okay. So this, this other shape, shape two, that's a major chord. So shape three, that's a major chord. And then shape four is a minor chord, okay? Wrong answers are welcome here. And understand that in this chat, we're having fun. So if anyone gets a little pumped up or whatever, we're all about being encouraging, supportive, and just enjoying this. I love this kind of stuff because I actually really enjoy, I'm looking, suddenly I'm looking up at this like old drum machine I have up there. And at some point I'll talk about it. Maybe I'll grab it at some point, but... It has the the buttons instead of laid out like a piano keyboard, it has them like a guitar fretboard. And that was the first time I remember programming things MIDI and just using my fingers like a guitar player. And it actually really, now that I think about it, sort of helped me connect the dots. Ha <laughs> ha, pun intended, I guess. So what I'm getting at is that this kind of stuff that we're doing is totally valid as a way to get better at the shapes and the relationships on guitar and then you can start to fill in, oh, so oh, so that shape that I like, oh, that's how I found the flat seven or whatever. It's like, oh, okay, that sounds kind of like fancy, but all of a sudden you you snuck up on it using, using your guitar theory. Actually, let's do this one over here on the actual map. So, and I'll do it in pink so we can see it better with the green. Bear with me. Okay. So this is like the classic minor pentatonic box one, right? Okay. So. So looking at where it is on the fretboard now, I'm just going to ask you very simply, like what minor pentatonic scale is this? Just give me a letter name of what's our root, basically, in this case. We got Bob Marley in the chat today. Woo! Fretonomy. Oh, nice. I like that. I like good apps. There's one that I'm crazy about for ear training called Chet. All right, Adam Erickson in first with the correct answer. G. Okay, so G would be the root. G would be the root or the one in terms of the... Um, the scale degrees. So let's say the G's right here. Oh, 
Oh jeez. Oh gosh. Okay. Those are the three G's. And yes, it will look like a children's drawing or maybe a Jackson Pollock graffiti. That that white looks a little bit intense, but so we've got the G, G, and a G. Right? Okay, so in relation to the G, um, what note would this one be right here? What note is this? What, what note is this? And it's it's not normally in there, but it's right there. What notes are those yellow notes? So here's our G, that's our home. That's a G. What's that note? What's that note? Can you tell me what note is that? Great. Galen's in there with a five, so that's a fifth. I think Galen has been using his training on bass. He's been doing the Scott's bass lessons. Scott's great. Uh, and the bass lessons have been showing Galen where the, the sort of bass arpeggios are. Or I can play it with the bass sound. Ho! Oh. Bob Marley, you'll like this. Sorry. It's fun though, that's a Moog. Whew. Okay, so that's a fifth. And in this case, the fifth would be a D. So, just as a little example, like knowing uh, the relationship from a root is one way to look at theory. So if you just knew that this was the root and that was the next note there, that'd be a fifth because of the, the distance, right? The relation to where they are on the instrument. And then if you're like, well, but what's the name of that note? You might know it from looking at that dot and be like, well, I know the root names. That's the fifth fret, fifth string, so that's a D. And then you would start to make that connection and it's kind of like what I'm getting at is like whatever avenue gets you there to understanding that information so that it, you can use it. So you might gradually start to train your brain and be like, all right, I'm going to quiz myself on how do I name the letter name? Um, if I give myself a root, how do I name the letter name of the fifth or the third? And But that's not something that you absolutely need right away. You can layer that in as you go. Then you'll start to see as you build up this sort of like foundation of knowledge, more things will come in when you're ready and when it's ready. So for example, like when it comes to the fifth and the sixth string on guitar, that's a great place to start laying that foundation. So at the very beginning, it's part of why caged is what it is and everything as far as the, actually, yeah, I'm still getting acquainted with how I can do this. So it better, best shows up. Sorry. Um, so I'm, I'm filling in these kind of landmark notes here on the fifth and the sixth string. Because these kind of become our meat and potatoes here in the open strings. So right out of the gates, when we first get a guitar, we sort of like, we learn the, the note names. So the E and the A string, and then like we sort of get to know those the best because we start playing chords and things that call upon us to learn okay well how do i know the name of this chord okay you got to know the lowest note the lowest note right there that's a g so as we know we sort of chip away at it right there right and then we kind of get acquainted like oh, okay so the dot that helps me remember and these should just be things that even it's all right if you like sometimes we overlook things you're like oh my gosh i never realized that those are good when we hit those moments so yeah the that dot right there that's the third fret third fret so g and c that starts to become like almost automatic, G and C, and then you kind of maybe reach a point where like, okay, the A and the D, they get pretty automatic, it's that second dot. And then you start connecting, oh, that's the fifth fret. Okay, so when someone says fifth fret, you sort of already start going towards that second dot and so on. And then you get it up to this area, like the E and the B, and maybe you sort of get to know these from, from tuning and all those kind of things that, that get you there. And then you sort of, wrap your head around the idea that oh, okay up here it repeats so on the double dot it repeats and that's really good news that's why this that 12 fret range is kind of that's the zone you have to like get to know and then everything just sort of copy paste up from there the reason i didn't just continue on up the dots is because this stretch up here is a little bit different just in terms of how we get to know it and remember it because the the classic whole letter names like a b c and d they live right on the dots up until there. Uh, and then when, on the sixth string, when we start to venture a little bit higher, they sort of go between the dots, as it were. 
I don't know why. Maybe somebody has a Wikipedia or some kind of deep dive video on that as far as why they put the dots where they did on the guitar. But you've got this seventh fret where there's a B and then what's kind of nice though between the, the, the sixth and the fifth string is that you've got this, this B to a C. It's also on the fifth string in that moment is where the E goes to the F. So a lot of this we, we probably know. And then just sort of like flash forward as we get these roots, uh, we get acquainted with them. We know we're gonna pick up the same information on the first string because that matches the sixth string, right? So what you get is like these bites out of the whole um, set of information. And what I want you to start to trust is that that actually is a, a way to build your entire understanding of guitar. And it's more unique to guitar than it is like it's not quite the same on piano. Piano has the benefit of that you see all the notes that are right there. There's never any confusion. Like if you have one spot where a particular like F sharp is going to be, you're not going to like on guitar, as we all know, you can have the same, same note in a bunch of spots. And that gets a little bit confusing, but there's a lot of upsides to guitar where the same shape we can take up and down and just repeat it. So, um, once we get these, like the low fifth and sixth string, we also pick up the sixth string or the first string. And that sort of builds up this skeleton that we can kind of find our way if we need a G sharp, even without knowing exactly where it is, we've gotten the muscle memory of finding the G there, right? So we can figure it out in one step. It's like, or maybe two steps. We get the G and then we go to the G sharp. So we get to a point where it's like, without playing that G, we can sort of see where the G is and then just go directly to that G sharp if that's what we needed, right? So we've got these bar chords. That usually is, is, that what, is what comes next. So we've got the major and the minor bar chords, right? And being able to find that root, you can see why that's so critical because if that shape stays the same, the only thing preventing us from, from finding where we need to be for a song or riff or something that is asking for, let's say, like a B-flat major chord is just finding that root. Because once we find the root, we can just take the shape. So a lot of it with guitar is going to be root and shape. And I think that's like awesome, frankly. It's the thing that guitar has as a superpower. And we need to kind of just take advantage of that. So... Um, let's see, I'm winging it. Is this making sense, by the way? If it's making sense, drop the brain emoji into the chat. Um, and we'll dive in a little bit further now. By the way, if you want to learn more of this stuff, I've got, um, I, I don't yet have a theory course per se together, but I've got exercises that go over these exact kind of things to drill in the meat and potatoes, there's a root name recall that's day one of my five day free course, the five day skills challenge. Um, have any of you guys taken that already? Cause even if you're a member already, you can sign up for it and you'll get this five day sequence where you get these bite sized lessons. Uh, and the first day is this root name recall where I put together a bunch of little audio files where you can put them into your um, Spotify or Apple Music or whatever, and then just shuffle them and it just quizzes you. So it creates like a, a, a root name randomizer and you just got to put it on shuffle and it'll be like, you know, fifth fret, fifth string. And then you got to try to get there before I do. Brains, so many brains in the chat. Um, and if you're wondering who am I, I have this silly dumb video I'm going to show you right now. And um, my name is Tim Fagan. I live in Nashville. Uh, I love the root and the shape. Uh, that shiny object is from when I worked with Colby Calais several years ago. And we wrote a song called Lucky that became a big international hit. And so I was a professional songwriter, still am, uh, for a long time. And a lot of music and film and TV, but like guitar is my first love. I love blues guitar and, you know, Weezer and all sorts of stuff. And um, so I've put a lot of years into playing guitar in sessions, recording and producing a lot of stuff on my own, being asked to be other people's guitarists and all that. And I love teaching now because it's a really interesting time, I think, with guitar where there's more to be said for just doing it because you love it and finding ways to be creative. So if you enjoy the way I teach, a lot of where we take it to the next level in our courses and community is just, I'm gonna try to keep people sharing and expressing whatever they're working on on guitar. 
Because I think between that area of like being new at guitar and having all these like easy, quick wins at the beginning, like learning bar chords and open chords and stuff like that. And then there's this, you know, the intermediate plateau that everyone sort of talks about they're afraid of is like this sort of like, I was going so great. And then all of a sudden everything got sort of the same and I'm not sure if I'm getting any better. And then it seems like there are these pros out there, these like super shredders on the horizon that I see on Instagram and everything like that. And it's like, there's so much more fun to be had, I think, in just like, not just accepting where we're at, but like embracing whatever we're working on and just loving the idea of like, I can't wait to pick up my guitar and learn a new thing. And that to me is the momentum and the fun of it. So I like throwing musical challenges at, at y'all and these little you know quizzes and things like that speaking of which before we get into this little video about me i want to uh let's see where do i have it i put together some videos and uh this one is going to be a quick quiz just answer in the chat um you've got to this is going to be crazy so so be ready this is a before they were stars tell me um i'll turn that off um, you'll get it. So just answer in the chat who you recognize this rock star from their kids, uh, from the from their like uh, uh, school photo. Ready? This is called uh, Before They Were Stars. Future Star. Here we go. Future, future star, future. Oh, yeah. Star. Who's that? You got to answer quickly. Who is it? Who is it? And you guys can hear the music, right? The music's very important for this. Time's running out. Who's got it? <laughs> yeah, nice. All right. Oh, Adam Erickson gets it. Oh, Slash, so close, Galen. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I made that video back when I was doing a lot of streaming on Twitch. I would make these little like crazy uh, quiz videos just to break things up because I would do long like three hour streams. I haven't watched that in a while. Obviously, it still holds up. You know what also holds up? This. Let's go, Tony. Come on. They oh, that's my dog. That's my dog, Tone. Um, anyway, we have fun here. And let me show you this video here. This is sort of like the 30 second commercial for who's this guy? Who is this guy? Who is this dude? By the way, can you hear the, the audio when it's playing? I never know with this uh, OBS streaming software that I'm using. Yeah, nice work, Adam. Props, props to Adam for getting the axle. Um, yeah, James, if he probably saw that one. Yeah, in the barrel of the style points, bro. Um, just want to see if the audio is working. If, uh, there's a delay time on that. All sounds good. Okay, ready. Here we go. All right, this is the who is this dude video. Wait. Honolulu back in 1993. Ooh. Boy in his bedroom playing Stevie and the Weeds. One day he's gonna move out to LA, gonna tour around the world, getting paid to play. He rode lucky and he won a Grammy. Charmy has shouted him out in a magazine. He's still playing that guitar every single day, making records in Nashville with Lolly and Tony. It's nice to meet you. Whoa! I mean, come on, the production value. Lolly and Tony. Um, okay, let's talk more about theory. Um, ask me questions. Keep chiming in. Let me know um, where I can zero in because um, I think you're getting the idea that we take a bite at a time. <laughs> keep playing songs, keep playing riffs, and then dipping in, like going to the chalkboard, looking for a thing that you're... It's like the moment that you, sometimes I think of it like math. Let's put on the sort of like mathable music. Okay. So you know how math seems useless the moment you leave school, but you kind of forget the fact that actually without basic math, you'd be lacking a, a core skill of just adulting and just sort of like you use it a lot. It's great to have the times tables. It's great to have them automatic. And can you flash back on what it was like learning that? Like, I can't remember how multiplication and division was explained to me the first time. I can't, maybe, I probably wouldn't be able to articulate like how I would explain it to someone. But I do know that if I found, found that someone was just doing everything by counting on their fingers, 
unless they're an absolute toddler, I'd be a little bit worried. I'd be like, well, no, no, there's a better way. And then I would probably just have to walk through the process of, well, okay, now imagine if you're counting on your fingers, what if you could, you know, but there's such a benefit. Like you could just do these things more quickly. And I actually kind of miss math a little bit because there were levels of satisfaction of like getting like arithmetic, algebra, geometry, trigonometry. I couldn't remember any of it now, pretty intense, but like basic, I don't know, like angles and degrees and like, who knows? I, I was so good at algebra when I was doing it. And it created a sense of maybe like problem solving and muscle memory. And then once you get into like the advanced cal calculus, when I was a senior in high school, uh, they, they out of nowhere offered this option. You could either continue on into calculus or you could take this thing called discrete math, which was the perfectly named thing. It's like discrete, I guess, is sort of like, it was all these Venn diagrams and stuff. My point is that I took discrete math because I was like, I'm done with calculus. Like I've done this math thing long enough. It's getting kind of like in the weeds for me and very like academic and just, I'll never use this. You're, I'm giving you permission when it comes to theory to kind of take that approach where if you get basic math, everyday math, that'll save you time and make things faster and make it more useful, use it. And then at the moment where it starts seeming like, I don't know if I'm gonna need this. It seems a little bit too like, just for jazz players or just for classical players, like that's totally valid. And maybe you'll circle back to it. Maybe you'll steal one little move that they have. And I have a lot of sort of like a little bit jazzy and, and chord theory knowledge and stuff like that. But I, I know exactly where the water gets deeper for me where I'm like, nope, I'm out. I can kind of fake it. If I have to, I can fake it, but I'm not going to pretend and I'm going to leave that to the people that um, live and die for that stuff. Cause you got to save your energy for what it is you really dig the most. So if you find yourself getting too frustrated trying to conquer a theory thing, that might be your like check engine light saying like check back in with the fun and juice it up again with like playing a riff or something that you know and love and, and just sort of like come back to that well. Um, I hope that helps. Mainly trying to ease your mind. Yeah, the quadratic equation, baby. I mean, that thing, what was it? Like A squared plus B squared plus C squared. Like, ah, uh, it used to be like literally like the back of my hand because that's where I would draw all the formulas and try to cheat. No, I would not cheat on tests. Um, mnemonics. You know, I, I don't have any mnemonics at the moment that I like teach with because to be honest I've only been kind of like actively doing this teaching thing for you know less than a year but I I love seeing them there's um I'll, I'll start working them in as I find ones that either I can sort of claim as my own and sort of put a spin on it and then ones that I think are really to the point because there's a lot of them more on that later basically and maybe we'll some, stumble on some here um Tim Taylor probably already split but uh good to see you good to see you um Trucks, yeah, Trucks was the band I had in high school. We were really good. Um, sorry, I'm going through these here. Jimi Hendrix played for a long time as a guitarist. Yeah, big band jazz group, yeah. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix definitely um, paid his dues and played as a rhythm guitar player for other people. Um, yeah. Yeah, good point, DJ, as far as like math theory, it, it gives you more ability to, to roam around and solve different things. Um, outside of just songs. Because a lot of times people will say like, I, I learned this from this one song, I learned this lick, but what do I do now? And that what do I do now moment is where theory is there to be like, aha. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's mess around a bit with some more stuff here. See if I can sort of invent another game or two on the fly. Um, okay, so let's in fact, let's incorporate this uh, groove that we had here. So we know from previous experience that this is just vamping in E, right? So let's see here. We've got these notes. So I'll just sort of erase these dots here for a second. So at the beginning of this stream, I have the, the bass riff here. And let's see if we can find intervals so I basically just mapped out the notes that are being used here okay so let's go from the lowest note to the highest note of this riff so, so we've got this so those 
that's our entire table of contents for that riff. We'll stop there for a little bit so it doesn't numb us out. Um, I'm going to start, and this is kind of like we're doing, we're doing um, interval names, relationship names, uh, note names. We'll dive in with all of it. So, so I'll just ask you questions, drop it into the chat. Um, what is the lowest note of this riff? And I'll sort of be working away here. So our lowest note. And I'll circle it. I'll, I'll sort of start revealing the answers as we go. In fact, I think we'll go to this view. Ooh, lowest note. It's an E, and that's the root. So we'll do root equals E. Okay. What is our this note right here? This is the next note. So you could look at that and be like, uh, just go with what you know. Okay, it's on the dot. It's on the sixth string. Oh, from the bar chord. If I was asked to play seventh fret, sixth string, you could get there and be like, oh, okay, it's a B. And maybe right away you're not exactly sure what the relationship is because what I want to do is fill in like, what interval is that? Adam's got it. And remember, this isn't, you don't have to know every single one of these because if this riff was going by on a jam, and all you, all you knew how to do was play by ear and find it. That's the most important thing. But if you're kind of finding your way into it, you're like, okay, I'm... you might not, you know, need to have the full story. You might know that that's an E. You might know that that's that note you like to play that shows up in a lot of funky riffs. And you might know that, oh, that's the third or whatever. We'll get to it. Okay, so the next note up is this one. What note is that? If you're to just name it on the fretboard, it's like, hmm, that is, that's the fifth fret, fifth string. That is the D. Let's just go by, by the note names from here on out. So, and then we'll circle back for the, so that next one up, again, using your bar chord root name knowledge, that's another E. Okay, so that one's easy. You're going to know that that's the root. This next one up here starts to get into the fourth string. Well, that, that might be something where you're like, well, how, how am I supposed to know that? Well, we can get into that. So what I might know, and even I, as I look at that, my first instinct is to know that that, that, that next note up is the flatted third. That actually pops into my head before the note name. I, I favor I favor these over the the letter names most of the time when when something is on the fly. And then this is the major third. And the D is a flat seven. Minor third, that'd be a regular G. And the G sharp. Sorry, that sharp is not what it should be. So you guys are doing great and you're putting lots of correct answers into the chat and I love that and hopefully this is just kind of like a little mini case study where why would I need to know this stuff well let's say if it's a, a, a jam session where I'm just mimicking what the bass player is doing and the bass player shows me almost in the same way that I'm showing with the the dots on the fretboard you're good to go you've survived that test <laughs> What if I'm sounding it out from a recording, I'm sitting at home and I'm just sort of finding it. Okay, now I've found it and now I wanna take it somewhere else. Okay, so uh, I've, I'm into another situation where like, oh, I wanna know what's going on here. That's that question mark. We're like, okay, well then what are the notes? Okay, you might start with the naming the letter names first because you might have that from your bar chord knowledge. So you'd be like, okay, that's an open E obviously. Uh, that's a, a B and uh, that's a D. And then you might start to see something where, see, within this, to me, what I was talking about earlier, what's what's important, not important, not more or less important, but like, if this is one of my E notes, these two notes right here, and it's getting too, too crazy here, I'll just sort of clear that. This is an E note. In fact, I'll sort of color code these. Again, thanks for bearing with me on this. So let's say if that pink pink dot is the root note. 
that major third is is a very important kind of shape on the guitar that these locking tuners kind of rattle sometimes versus the minor third so that's another kind of takeaway and and that is the type of relationship where if that's the root if the white note is the root i can more or less find like those major and those major and minor thirds, except for right there when I went for it. So I'm just doing the circles there. Um, let's see, another one like right here. So what I'm doing there is that the solid white dot is, is the root. And then we've got the third and the minor third, the flat third, right? And so what I'm showing you there is just that anywhere on the fretboard, if you give me the root and I, you know, and, and if I accounting for the, you know, how there's, there's that thing with the, the third and the, and the second string, that there's that tuning thing. You've, you've got these shapes that are going to be major and minor thirds. And that's, that's useful because let's say if I was in a scale here, let's say if I was uh, up here in the A minor pentatonic. And this is where I'll sort of leave us at this for today. Um, if that's like our A minor pentatonic, horrible looking <laughs> dots right there. But so if that was our root right there, which it is. It's important to me to know where those minor thirds are in relation to those roots because that has a particular benefit, because that has a particular, a particular sound. And now I'm starting to make these dots work for me where it's not just like, oh, I've been told that these dots will all work and I won't play a wrong note. That's kind of our first thought sometimes when we, when we learn a scale is like, okay, good. I've been told that if I play that and the song's in A, uh, it'll all sound good and whew, no more sweating bullets. I can just start spraying bullets and play all the notes that pop into my head. That's going to be cool for the first half hour. <laughs> and every moment after that, that's sort of your welcome to soloing uh, welcome kit. After that, if you play with more experienced players, they're going to feel like, oh, you got to spend more time just finding out what you like, what you want to say with these notes which is back to my point about like the, um, the minor third in this case, those pink notes are the, are the roots. In my mind, I light up where those minor thirds are. Even if I'm not necessarily playing it at that moment, I know what they're gonna sound and feel like when I go for them. And that's how I want you to feel is like, oh, I have options. I have options. And if I decide to choose it, I don't know exactly how it's gonna sound because that's, that's why we live in the moment. But I have a sense that it's gonna be more, more of that rather than the major third, which would be right here. And you might be saying, well, but that doesn't look like the shape that you drew before. It's like, that's, that's where guitar can be frustrating. Oh, get it, Tony. Oh, yeah, all my videos. Oh my God, all my videos just lit up. I'm bad at that, sorry. But that was pretty good. If you're gonna have Tony popping in randomly, sorry. Um, bloopers. Um, okay, what I was trying to say though is that earlier you're like, maybe you expected to see that same minor and major third that we had before. You have to be ready for the fact that sometimes it'll be on the same string. Sometimes it'll be on a different string. Sometimes it'll cross that dreaded tuning difference of the of the G to the B string and all that. And you just have to start gobbling up these shapes as if they're like Pac-Man with pellets or whatever the current version of Pac-Man would be. Like Sonic the Hedgehog with golden... Mario with golden gloves. Whatever works for you. So the, the takeaway is that you got your root and then you've got the notes relative to it that give it some sort of relationship. So, if we go back to this groove, bye-bye dots, we are in E. And this is where I'm gonna 
leave you off on this jam again. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Saturday. What are you doing today? Are you watching football? I'll quiz you as we're talking now. Um, I'll be playing a note here. You tell me what that note is. So that's like, imagine if we're down here and this... Um, So you can either name the letter name or the scale degree name. So in this case, I'm playing the root. What would the root letter name be? We'll fill in those roots first. Anybody got any money on the football games out there today? All right. So that's our, that's our E, yeah, we got. Okay, so that's the root, that's the E. Now I'm gonna fill in this note. What note is this? I'm gonna ask more of you, cause you can do more guitar friends. Tell me the name of the note, the letter name, and also the interval, the degree. So we were just talking about this a moment before in A, now we've got. So that's the minor third. That's a G. Good. We can keep it moving. Let's keep going. Um, what's uh, what is this note? Letter name and interval. And in that one shape, we'll just stay in that one shape. There's there's two of them there. wanted to get that's a good one I'll put that one in because we'll continue on this thread if you guys found any value from this it's good to know this right there this right there this matters which is exactly the same as that that octave shape matters that is your decoder ring for the guitar fretboard. So it can be your quickest way into learning the note names and the location of the notes on the fourth and the third string. Cause that's kind of the no man's land that lives in the middle of the, of the neck. But if you've got a quick way to see that octave, the B and the B, then you can quickly get there. All right. So yeah, that's the fifth, that's a B. Let's continue on. All right, what note is this? Again, I'm using that octave shape there. That is the fourth. That is the A. On to green. This one lives near and dear to my heart. I love this note. I think of it often in my sleeping hours. I wake up and I'm like flat seven. Yeah. I like the flat seven. It can bend right up to the the root. It's the one that you can do this with. So it's got a flavor. Obviously, look at what we just did. We take that away, that is that E minor pentatonic. It's not that many family members, but it's five. But the ones that it includes, they each have a personality. They do their thing. Now I want you to do your thing, guitar friend. Tell me, what's, what's a guitar topic or a song or something you're working on right now? I'm petting Lolly, she's jumping on my leg. Oh, Lolly, Lolly. She's gonna pull my headphones out of my ears. Um, wakes up in a cold sweat. James! Oh, CGI, oh my gosh, that's a lot, James. I'm just trying to get better at Premiere Pro and all that kind of stuff. Um, my guitar friends, it's been an honor and a privilege hanging out with you. 
I hope you check out the free course. If you haven't heard about it, I have a five day free course. The link is in the description. Uh, I also have courses. We have this amazing community, the amazing community. Uh, many of you are here in the chat. Uh, it means the world to me whenever you show up in these live streams and when you show up in the, in the members area and share. Speaking of share, we're running a, a dare to share challenge right now. So even if you're not a member, you can jump in, join us with a 14 day free trial. Uh, first two weeks, everything, the buffet is yours. And if you do that, share whatever you're working on. Post a video of yourself playing. You can use the backing tracks from the courses that I have in there. And for every entry with a posted video, you'll increase your chances of winning this looper pedal. This little dynamo of a looper pedal I found on Amazon because I wanted to find the most affordable looping pedal to recommend to people. We'll see, I'll test it a little bit more. But to any of my members, you have till the end of the month share what you're working on and keep on working hard keep on playing keep on doing the dream and uh, oh i'm gonna i'm gonna finish with a groove that is very similar to this this is uh i just posted this this morning and i, I recorded it last night um i'm gonna turn off this jobby do sorry the bells the whistles um where is it it is yeah okay this is using this whole setup and uh, check it out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna work. Let's see. That's a good chord. Yeah, I mean, it's the same groove I was working on today. It's a vibe. We are vibing out. Um, thanks, guitar friends. I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next live stream. Don't be a stranger. Say hi and stay warm out there. Drop an ice cold emoji out there if you're in a place that's going to be cold today. You could drop a football emoji in there, maybe a, a freezy face emoji. You can maybe drop like a Santa emoji. You, you can maybe drop like a penguin emoji, have an ice cream emoji. You can maybe drop like a guitar, go with surfing. It's all